You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zentech Consultants. I am Jim, your stunningly loquacious host, and with me, as always, is my partner. It's Rocco. It's Rocco. See, Rocco gets no accolades because he's just dull. But that's all right. I make up for his dullness by telling you all the engineering joke of the week. All right. Ready, Rocco? I'm ready. All right. Here we go. So an engineering graduate, he reports for his first day of work at his new job and his manager greets him with a handshake and then he hands him a broom and he says, your first job is to sweep the floor. Angrily, the graduate replies, hey man, I have a degree in mechanical engineering from MIT. And man goes, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I didn't realize. Give me that broom back. I better show you how this thing works. Huh? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> okay. Yes, mocking the engineers. Always good to in- insult your listenership. All right, folks, we have a guest on the show today. Uh, Craig Swearingen, who is the implementation specialist and consultant from BricsCAD, is here once again. So, Craig, thanks for taking the time to be here today, sir. Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. Uh, always a pleasure to have you on. All right. So, Craig is here uh, mainly because he actually suggested a topic, um, and, and, and I liked it. So, we, we want to talk today about kind of the relationship between software partners and software developers and and how that can affect you people listening, right? You know, the the folks we call the end users. Um, You know, Rocco and I are partners uh, for a number of software developers and Brixis is one of the the main developers that we work with, right? So it seems to have a really good concept to have Craig in and discuss some of the the good, (laughs) the bad, and the sometimes goofy uh, aspects of, of how the developers and, and, and partner, you know, how are user relationship functions? Uh, and before we get into those details, so let's, let's, let's get you guys a good intro into Craig and, and who he is. So Craig, why don't you give the folks a little bit of your background and how you wind up at Brixis and, and what do you do there on a daily basis? Well, it's been a while since uh, we've spoken and I've been on the podcast. So thanks again for having me on the show. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Craig. Absolutely. So a uh, bit about my background. I previously worked at a civil engineering firm for 19 years and started off just as a basic CAD user, ended up learning civil 3D, and then turned into a CAD manager. And that's when Robert Green, uh, the person I call like the Yoda of CAD management, yep. that's when he contacted me about the that. position, <laughs> right? I mean, dude's a stud. Uh, <laughs> he contacted me about a position at Brixis. Uh, and so I had to jump at the opportunity. Uh, But what do I do on a daily basis? Well, the cool thing about my job is that no two days are alike, which means I assist BricsCAD customers with implementing and migrating from, let's call it one CAD to (laughs) BricsCAD. And then uh, I could also be attending like a pre-sales discovery meeting followed by hosting or conducting a technical overview. And in between talking to YouTube goofballs about coordinating (laughs) partner meetings or maybe even submitting feature requests, doing technical research. So my day is always filled with a wide variety of tasks. Right, that's the good thing and the bad thing about your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's an excellent intro. So um, I tell you, one of the things that, that always, I guess, entertains me, right, is that yeah, a lot of people who we deal with never quite seem to make the distinction between a partner like Zentech and, and the software that we're selling or supporting or training them on. Um, it, it's a pretty common misunderstanding uh, that because, you know, people are working with a, a partner, right, on a system like BricsCat, that we are the ones who have developed and coded the program and that we can make it do anything the client wants instantly. Uh, and, and look, folks, I wish that was the case. <laughs> you know, we, we'd make everybody listening a lot happier, all of our clients happier, and I'd have a lot more cash in my bank account. Uh, but, but there's a multi-tiered relationship here. And, and that's what we're going to get into today because I think it's important to you guys listening to understand right who's responsible for what and what limitations i guess that all of us face right and that's why craig is here he's going to help explain it 
all to us. Um, so, so Craig, what's the kind of the user partner developer relationship process for a system like BriskCAD, right? And, and is that pretty common for most software systems on the market today? Well, first, let's start by saying I don't think that this relationship is as common and as tight as it used to be. And I mean the relationship between the user, partner, and the developer. I would say that maybe over the past de decade, especially, there's been a fundamental shift in the industry, uh, starting, I think, with the dominance of subscription services. Uh, for me, I really believe that was the hinge point. And up until that point, I think software developers were much more interested and involved in what the user had to say, and even the relationships built with or without the partner. I also think that some of the CAD software companies in particular realized that the shareholders were more important than the end users. And that's where Brixis understands the end users, their perspectives. And quite honestly, we haven't bailed on them. Uh, I've heard some real horror stories about CAD software companies <laughs> yeah. and how they become so big, they decided to distance themselves, if not just part ways with the people who absolutely love and promote their product. And keep in mind, these are the same people that will spend their free time sending ideas and suggestions to the CAD company to improve the user experience. So for me, it really makes zero sense uh, to kind of distance themselves or dismiss their customer base and their ingenuity, because after all, that's what makes us so unique and really the best CAD solution on the market today is because Brixis still decides to listen to those users. Yeah, and I think it's vitally important, right? And, and hey, look, you make the excellent point, right? And, and like I said, we'll call it some other CAD company um, who, you know, has risen their stock price by like 600% over the last decade. Uh, by focusing on the business end of it and, and like you said, the, the, the share price and the stockholder dividends rather than developing a better, more effective system for their users. Um, so I, I think you're absolutely right in that, that respect. Um, so look, when, you know, when Craig suggested today's topic for the podcast, right, I love the idea because it, it kind of hits on a key problem that I run into all the time from the tech side of things you know, here at Zentech. And, and, you know, and that's, you know, folks who want me to just, you know, add and adjust or, or just flat out change, right? Basic tools and basic processes inside of a software package like BricsCAD, uh, you know, so, so that it adapts to their way of working. And they don't always understand why I can't just do that for them immediately. Um, so, so Craig, let's start with the concept of, user requests, right? For things like, you know, new features or, or if they want to report a bug, what's kind of the process at, 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 at BricsCAD, right? For getting those resolved across the partner developer channel. Well, you brought up a really good point, Jim, and I overlook that a, a lot. You know, the fact that people are thinking that the partners can just snap their fingers <laughs> and the new feature requests or the bugs are magically fixed, right? And then it even goes the same for uh, the the developer or the, the software company themselves. You know, it's not an easy place to be. Uh, so we thank you for kind of taking one for the team in that regard. <laughs> uh, but this is why, you know, Brixis wants the users to know that we are listening. Users can uh, file support requests, choose whether their situation is like a bug or a feature request, and they can explain in detail what it is that they would desire. Often when I'm involved with the client, I'll even file these requests on their behalf. So these requests are then answered by our award-winning technical support specialists, and the requests then are passed along to our development teams respectively. And while our development team can't always prioritize every request, there is definitely a tactical, a diligent, and a calculated plan to address as many of those features and bugs as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say this, right? We, like, so we work really closely you know, with Craig and the other folks over at BricsCAD. And hands down, one of the absolute best you know, responsive teams out there, whenever we, we come to you guys with any kind of an issue or problem, there's always a reply. And it sometimes replies, look, man, we're, we're putting it on our list. We'll get to it when we can. But more often than not, if it's a, if it's an end user problem or an issue or a bug, there's there's a you know one of those tech guys from from Briscat is on it in like an hour. So I, I can't say enough good stuff about how you guys respond. Uh, so so Rocco, let's do this. In, in terms of our clients, um, do most of the folks we work with do they realize and kind of understand that we're not the developer and that there is a process and some time needed to make functional changes to their systems? I would say for the most part, yes, but there's always the, 
you know, let's say the, the ridiculous um, requests or expectations that are out there um, that, that come up. But uh, but for the most part, I, I do think that folks understand it. Um, you know, and, and they're starting to see more and more as, like, I, I get the support requests that come in, right, to, to Zentech for our customer base. And, um, and I back you guys up in saying that, that the Bridges team is excellent and always responding in combination with our team, right? Um, it, it, it's a hand-in-hand -hand partnership, and uh, a lot of people appreciate it and, and respect that. All right, so look, you know, the biggest thing that we have to, I guess, kind of strive for as, you know, software, VARs, right, evaluated resellers or partners, whatever you want to call us, uh, it's to make sure that we are effectively communicating our clients' needs and issues to the developers over at, at Brixis, right? And a lot of the issues that you guys may run into can be addressed at the partner level, right? If it's process related or if it's something that can be resolved with a, with a, a different workflow or some additional training, or even if we need to make some configuration train, you know, changes, you know, Zentech is here, we're happy to help with that. Uh, even if it's tech-based, right? Like Rocket was saying, we'll be your first line of defense, your partner, as you know, we usually have more direct access to, to, you know, partner support forums and the developers tech support team, you know, and Craig, Craig still takes our phone calls. We don't know why, but he does. Um, so <laughs> there, Craig, you know, on that front, what do you think are the are kind of the key components and processes um, in effectively communicating client needs that a partner can address, right? To, to you and the guys over at, at Brixis. Well, I think having a relationship like this where, uh, and you just mentioned where you can call us up and we can have a conversation that that helps uh and then on top of that that's another reason why we like working alongside the client in tandem with the partner uh especially a, a value-added reseller like zentech you know the developers on my end we uh when working alongside the client we can gain a very clear understanding of the client's requirements and you, you remember the game uh, as a little kid operator Yep. where the message gets completely mistranslated by the time it reaches the last person. Mm -hmm. and, and that can happen to the best of them, right? So we like working with the client and the partner to clearly define the requirements and set those priorities and realistic expectations. As you mentioned, some of those expectations become, can, can be very unrealistic at times. So all of that is, uh, is assisted with ensuring that the key stakeholders are involved, which flows into maintaining open communication. And most of the time, it's gonna involve a real world example from the clients demonstrating exactly what they expect to see. So getting that input from the client, providing direct communication back to them, assists with creating a team-like atmosphere that really only strengthens trust and the relationship between all parties. Yeah, that's good for everybody involved. It's the right way to do it, so. All right. So I tell you what, let's take a quick break here to get a word in from today's sponsor. Uh, and when we get back, I want to get into the ways that users, partners, and developers uh, all work together, right? And, and, and some of the new processes that Brickscad, uh, Brickscad is putting out based on both user and partner feedback. All right. So stand by, folks. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Jim and Rocco with Zentech Consultants and we wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the training options that we have available here for you guys at Zentech Consultants. We offer public training classes as well as private custom courses for all of your software and design needs. So, Rocco, why don't you tell the folks what kind of uh, training we offer and how do they reach out to us to get it going for them? Yeah, Jim, we cover everything from uh, from Bluebeam to Autodesk to Microsoft to BricsCAD uh, to civil site design training and beginner through to advanced level topics. Uh, like you said, both public and uh, and private courses. Um, if you've got if you got a group and want to run a class specifically for your team, we can help you. So just uh, feel free to hit our website. We're at zentechconsultants.net. That's Z-E-N-T-E-K, or you can give us a ring, 866-824-4459, or even drop us an email, sales at zentechconsultants.net. There you go, Zentech Consultants for all of your technology training needs. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast. We're talking with Craig Swearingen of BricsCAD, uh, kind of about the relationship between users and partners and developers. Um, and in this half of the show, 
I want to focus on how these three groups can work together, right? Kind of to make all of our lives easier. Uh, and what processes BricsCAD is focusing on to help all three of those groups function better as a team. Um, so, so Craig, let's start with getting all the parties talking together. Um, you know, what, what, what are the best practices for things like client meetings or collaborating on projects, right? I know you guys do that a lot with us. What's the best process to make sure everybody's on board with that? Well, I guess it, it comes down to who facilitates the conversation first. You know, most of the time, the partners are generally the first line of communication with the client. So Brixis is here to support the partner and ultimately the end user of the client. So in a perfect world, right? Regular meetings are set and everyone attends and everyone shows up and is ready to discuss the needs of the client. Uh, I need a map to where this perfect world of yours is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, that's why I made sure to clarify that. But, you know, it's it's making sure that you have the right people in the room and you assign team leaders in every party, clearly defining the roles. You know, and s some of those needs may be related to what we discussed earlier when it comes to having an example and then submitting a support request. Um, but let's not let's say it's not. Let's say the process is to achieve a specific task that is just slightly different than what they're used to. And what we'll do is offer options to address the process. It can be something as simple as making it known that the partner has training available to address the said issue uh, rather than immediately assuming it's a software issue. I used to see that as a cab manager all the time. Mm -hmm. People come up and go, the template's wrong, the template's wrong. And I'm like, there's 500 other people using this template <laughs> and no one's complained. So is it really the template? And we see that a lot with software. <laughs> That's what we always call re you know, operator error, right? Re replace yeah, operator, right. hit any key to continue. <laughs> right, so it, a lot of times it's automatically assumed it's the software. So if needed, we pull in our development staff and we'll pull them into the meetings with the client so that there's a direct one-on-one -on -one opportunity to meet and discuss all the objectives. Yeah, nice, that's a good setup. And it, like I said, it's the one we go through, right? It's a kind of a leading question, I get it, because this is how we work together. And I, I just, I think it's a great way to do it. Um, so, so look, you know, working on a client specific project, right? Where the partner and the developer are both at the table, it's great. Um, but I think that there, there's a, a broader concept concept rather that partnership needs to address right and that's the the needs of the design build community at large right? in, in other words there really needs to be a, a clear communication path right uh, you know between you know what the partner gets from client and and what the developer you know actually spends the time developing right doing what they do um, so, you know, Craig, how, how does a developer like BricsCAD work with partners to get the information they need for developing, you know, the best new tools that are going to appeal to the widest possible base of users? I do think it comes down to having a clear line of communication with your partners. And, you know, by the time this podcast is released, BricsCAD will have hosted our annual uh, partner conference. And this in-person event allows our global partners to learn about key BricsCAD workflows from the Brixis product management and leadership. And the event also includes product positioning for all the different license levels, as well as the product training sessions for partner technical representatives. And the attending customers or partners, managers, sales executives, et cetera, uh, they gain insight from learning about BricsCAD workflows that identify specific industry markets, sales positioning, product training sessions. And even this year, there's going to be like a future of BricsCAD partner feedback workshop with direct interaction to our development team. So I'm excited to attend that as I know it's going to be super cool. And there's going to be some tremendous development opportunities proposed by the partners directly. Yeah, nice stuff. Yeah, and everybody should be on the lookout for that because no, they always post some videos and some real good info from, you know, post that that uh, that meeting. So, Rocco, let me ask you, you know, fr from our end, how do how do because you you primarily do most of the communication stuff, right? How how do you work from the partner end to communicate, you know, clients, meaning multiple clients, right? general needs, kind of upstream from us to Craig and the other folks at BricsCAD more on a daily basis rather than, you know, at, at like a conference level or anything. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times it, it involves um, having the folks from Brixis on the line with the customer. I mean, we've done 
many demos, you know, where and, and conversations where the customer's right there. So we're we're hand in hand. Um, you know, and, and I think just from a from a sales standpoint, it, it's always important to be in touch with the customer, right? We we do our best to to, to try to keep communication flowing. How are you doing with BrickScout? What challenges are you running into? Can we help with training? Can we help with support? So it's communication. It's a regular communication and, and, and dialogue back and forth that that helps helps uh, everything move along, right? Um, you know, I, I think customers are, are hugely impressed, like we keep saying, with the uh, with the support structure, but even the, the learning platforms that are built into BricsCAD, um, it, they're, you know, it helps to make that the whole transition a heck of a lot easier um, it, it, it is part of the day-to-day the day -day process. Okay, I like that. All right, so, so let's talk about a few of the more recent changes from Brixis, right, that have come from kind of these partner developer communication processes we're talking about. Um, and, and most of these are almost like direct responses to client needs. Um, there have been a lot of changes uh, you know, regarding, you know, maintenance subscriptions and upgrades that have come with the latest release. Uh, and, and I know that a lot of that was driven by, you know, customer comments and some, some limitations actually that were put in place to kind of help focus on, you know, maintenance customers and to help partners like Zentech engage, you know, more closely with our clients when they have issues. So, so Craig, can, can you explain to folks kind of the, you know, the BricsCAD maintenance support structure for new licenses? Um, and the limitations of support for people who are not on maintenance and, and, and why BricsCAD kind of made those changes recently? Yeah, well, you know, BricsCAD maintenance, it's a cost-effective way to get the most out of your BricsCAD licenses. Uh, and, and it provides you export product support and upgrades. So one year of BricsCAD maintenance is now included for every new license. So it's not an additional add-on fee or anything else. It's automatically included when you purchase the product. So from there, you're free to renew your maintenance uh, from the second year onward. So for BricsCAD subscriptions, maintenance is always included during the first subscription, during the subscription period in general. And for perpetual holders, uh, maintenance is the most lucrative way to keep your software up to date. You get all the minor and major updates during the contract period. It also gives you access to qualified BricsCAD experts to manage your specific questions and requests. And without maintenance, users can't upgrade to newer versions. You can't gain priority with our award-winning technical support or access the Brixis proprietary plugins. So needless to say, maintenance really makes a huge difference for a very minimal cost. Yeah, it's, it's a huge thing and it's something that I strongly recommend everybody should be hanging on to. It's not something you want to let expire. You know, just for, if nothing else, just for the, the fact that you get priority attention because you're paying for it, right? You got to get something yep. for the, the, the fee. Um, so, you know, I, I think a big part of the, you know, I don't know if it's frustration, confusion I, that, that I see sometimes from clients comes when they are looking for, you know, process support or training, right? You know, there are a lot of people out there who will reach out directly to a developer like BricsCAD, you know, asking for, for kind of help with, you know, how to process on a specific project, right? Or they're looking for a very specific training for a, a one particular function that they use all the time, right? And a lot of times the best that they get from developers is, you know, okay, you know, here's a pre-recorded video or, you know, they'll send you an email reply saying, oh, you know, go research this tool. Um, and, and I understand that frustration, right? But, but I think people need to remember that software developers, are, you know, they, they can't provide that level of support to every single user while still putting forth the effort and the time and the expense to develop all these new tools and functions that we all ask for in every release. Um, so, so Craig, what's, what's kind of the recommended or, or the expected process that people should be going through for, you know, getting technical support and training on your software system? Well, that's something that I struggle with daily. You know, I used to do CAD, uh, do the CAD grind every day, doing design, you know, 40 plus hours a week, picks and clicks all day. And yet I was always still learning and looking for a better way to get my work done, right? Can you feel me on that? I can absolutely um, feel you on that. Right. So I would go to the typical places, you know, maybe start with a coworker, which, you know, may or may not be the best idea depending on their <laughs> demeanor that day. Yeah. Um, 
and then you go to Google and ask Google and you see what pops up or you jump over to YouTube, you know, but at times it felt like I was just kind of chasing my own tail. And then I started being very deliberate with my searches. So, uh, you know, that said, I think it also depends on the kind of training that you're looking for. Um, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't help somebody with ship building design because I don't build ships, right? So I, I work, came from a civil background, so I could help you with your civil stuff. But when it when you're talking about you know mechanical parts or uh, building a ship, I'm not going to be too much of a help. So you know where where do you go? What do you do? And I think if it's something in general, like you mentioned, like help centers or forums, uh, looking it up on YouTube may be suitable. But often there's going to be you know the need for a more in depth training. And I think it's wise to consider a certified training partner like Zentech. And let's just stick with the Zentech uh, story to make it all easier. So not only does Zentech have the technical competence to deliver a solution to your needs, but they also do it in a way that's affordable and makes sense. So to be honest, not everyone can afford corporate training directly from a software company. That's expensive, yet the same objectives can be accomplished by investing in Zentech or another Brixis certified training partner. Um, doesn't Jim and Rocco, doesn't Zentech offer like a block of hours that never expire for training? Yeah, we absolutely do. We have our tech blocks for ongoing support and help, man. I, see, I'm, see, this is why we have Craig on. He plugs us. I like Craig. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to be on more often, Rocco. <laughs> He's yeah, so, yeah, there you go. So that's that's just another another way to uh, get the support and training that you're looking for, uh, and still finding somebody with the background that's going to be able to address the needs that you're looking for. Good answer. I like it. All right, folks. So as always, I like to give the last word on the on the podcast to our guest for the day, um, so they can tell us something that I didn't think to ask about. So how about it, Craig? What what else do you think our listeners need to know about today's topic or you know, on any other topic you just think is cool and want to talk about? Well, I'm going to kind of uh, pat ourselves on the back a little bit. Um, and it's something that I've noticed when, when the first few months that I took the job, and it's something that I continue to notice. And it's something that unless you're in the trenches with us, you never see it, you never hear it, and you probably never even know it exists. But from the first few months I was on the job, I witnessed like an end user submit a ticket for a feature request. And you think, okay, somebody puts a feature request in, what's the likelihood that this thing's gonna actually come to fruition? Well, I would engage with development on that feature request to ensure that the details and the desired results are all in place. And later on, I get the pleasure of informing the end user about the upcoming features that would be included in the next software maintenance release. So I think that is super cool. And it's almost like as if you were able to follow like a, a newly purchased vehicle all the way down the assembly line. That's something that I get the insight of seeing. And, you know, that's a direct result of working with end users and partners like yourself to provide the tools and the features that users love, as well as the new functionality. And what that does is that supercharges your productivity. So again, if you're an existing BricsCAD user with a perpetual license, and you don't have a maintenance contract, you can upgrade your license uh, in that maintenance, Bricks Cab maintenance at any time and take advantage of the benefits. So additionally, you know, Brixis offers the ability to renew your maintenance plan for a maximum of up to three years. So you might want to look at that as a way of uh, maybe even saving some additional money. So look us up at Brixis.com or better yet, call Rocco and Jim at Zentech and they'll hook you up. <laughs> There you go. And I tell you, I'm going to kind of piggyback on what, what Craig was saying. I tell you something that BricsCAD does that in all of our years working with other big software companies, no one else has ever done. When when our clients have an issue and we open up a, a ticket and a support issue and a problem, BricsCAD addresses it amazingly quickly, does everything they can. But the one thing that BricsCAD does that no one else does every time there is a patch, a service release, a maintenance update, whatever it is, any kind of it, they send us a notification saying, hey, this patch addresses the issues from Craig's problem and Rocco's problem and Joe's problem. It spells out each and every ticket that we submitted and how it was fixed, which is amazing because then we can reach out to the clients and say, hey, download the new release. They, the, the, the thing that you wanted addressed, they did it. 
It's remarkable. Nobody else does that. So good job. Yeah, that is your pretty here, Craig. Yeah, thank you. It is pretty neat to be able to see all of that come to fruition. And then, like you said, in the end, you're just kicking around on a Wednesday. And next thing you know, you get this email that says, hey, that support ticket that you raised, uh, by the way, it's in the new maintenance release. Yeah, it's incredible. So, all right. So with that, I just want to say thank you again, Craig, for being here. We appreciate it. You're always a pleasure to have on. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. It's been you know, you. always, always fun time. All right. So we're going to bounce out of here, folks, and let you get back at your day. And we'll catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net or you can even call us 866-824-4459. Excellent, we look forward to hearing from y'all.